you might want to make room in your high value knife collection for the amazing Kershaw Trimmer model 1950. In my estimation, a slam dunk purchase if you are a knife freak like myself. And you probably are if you are watching this old school nut and fancy knife review on another huge Kershaw win. Lots of enthusiasm I have for the Kershaw lineup 2011. Talked about it in other videos when I saw that knife in the catalog, that is a trimmer. Model 1950. I said, yep, dig it. Love it. Like the shape, like the looks, I like the size. It is a whopping three and three quarter inch blade, jumping into the talking points, which puts it in mostly to the tactical folding knife arena. Emergency defensive knife. Or probably more real realistically, this is the first time I've ever said this on camera. A knife that will make you look cool at the shooting range. Whoa, check out that blade, man. That is a big blade. Popping out a 1950. It is a big knife. And I love big blades. Not for everyday carry use, and I would not say this is a great choice for a utility knife, EDC knife. In fact, I would say it's a poor choice for that. It's just too big of a blade. Your mileage may vary. I know. I know how it goes. Let's stack up. I'm kind of jumping down to, I don't know, options, value, some other knives. Let's stack up a couple other knives for size comparisons. How about the amazing, super high value, absolutely love it, previously reviewed, highly recommended, Spyderco Resilience. Love this knife. It's lighter, 5.2 ounces, 6 ounces. Yeah, anytime you get a knife this big with this much steel hanging out there, it's going to weigh something. A little something something. There you go. The trimmer goes up against the Spyderco Resilience, about the same size as far as blade. Completely different styles of blade, obviously. Love the flat ground on the Resilience. Love it, love it, love it. That doesn't mean I don't like this one. I'll talk about that here in a second. But interesting comparison, huh? Handle-wise, about the same. Let's throw it up against the highly used and abused most awesome Cold Steel Recon Tonto version. Tanto, Tonto. Look at that. I think it looks sick. About the same size. The reason I'm doing this is because it shows you handle and blade wise that the trimmer is stacking up against some other very, uh, how shall I say, winning designs in my estimation. High value, very proven, tactical folding knives. Cold Steel Recon 1, amazing, love it. How about the Cold Steel AK-47 new model? By the way, that was the new model of the Recon 1 as well. If you dig these lanyards, I'll annotate right now where I recommend you go get them. Anywho, look at that. AK-47 going against the 1950. Trimmer blade a little bit bigger. Love that clip blade on the AK-47 still. High traction. I'm getting distracted again. High traction G10, medium traction here. Okay, and let me see what else. Oh, how about a stable mate? The 1790 Turbulence. This is a higher end knife, much more expensive in the Kershaw lineup. Dwarfs it. Yep, trimmer dwarfs that knife. Big knife. Three and three quarter inches. Uh, what else? Hope you guys like this. I do. It's fun. How about the Combat Combative Edge M1? High end blade. Reviewed in the Nut and Fancy Project, somewhat of exp somewhat expensive, although uh, the price was lowered. Check it out. Go ch look at the review if you're interested. Yeah, stacks up well. M1 is a big tactical knife as well. I like reach in my folding tactical knives. I've said that a lot. Reach is good. Keeps bad people further away, probably. Um, I think in the philosophy of use as a tactical blade, the trimmer will serve just fine. Uh, collectible blade, you know, in your high value or, I don't know, low value collection, whatever you got going, great addition. It's a fun knife to just to have, to check it out, to look at. <coughs> Excuse me. Love this blade. Sick. Six ounces is not super light. But again, for almost a four inch uh, length blade, that's kind of the price of admission to this. Uh, the steel, 8CR13MOV. 
No surprises, that's what we're seeing all along in the Kershaw high value folding knife lineup. I love 8CR 13MOV. At least the Kershaw formulation of it, it's heat treated properly and it gets razor sharp. Speaking of which, as it comes out of box, this is just that, very sharp. Where's that magnifying glass? Let's check out that bevel. Oh, dude, nicely done, Kershaw. Nicely done. That bevel right there is a kind, that's the kind of width that I personally like to see because it's gonna mean that resharpening this knife for you is going to be so much easier as opposed to a very steep and uh, you know narrower bevel. Paper test. I will have to see your paper, sir. Here we go. Careful not to cut your finger. Looking through the viewfinder. Oh, dude, like butter. Like butter. Oh, man. Dudes, I love this knife. It is amazing. No, I'm not making it up. All enthusiasm is absolutely genuine here in the Net and Fancy Project. Blade shape, somewhat organic, is hollow ground. Make sure I'm telling you right. Yep. Um, good belly on it, good tip. Nice, precise tip. Love that. Excellent penetration capabilities with this blade. No doubt. Not tested, but I can tell you from previous experience from similar shaped blades, it will rock. Um, I think the blade shape is handsome and it's not so curved where resharpening it, resharpening it will be a hassle. Look at that tumbled uh, stonewashed finish. Boy, I like that. I like it better than the bead blasted finish they're putting on some of the 8CR 13MOV blades. Yes, I engraved it right there. That one turned out decent. There's your blade stamping right there. Overseas produced. That's all I'll say on that. That's why we have it for such a great price. Speed safe. Love the blade shape. Nice, deep uh, belly. It's, I've got no issues with it. How about speed? When you get a large blade like this, uh, generally it's going to come out slower. If it's unassisted, especially the combative edge might be a, an example of that. You got to give it a good push on that flipper tang. This one right here, also a flipper design. No thumb studs as you can see. And it comes out relatively quickly for a three and three quarter inch blade. Great job. Speed safe rocks. This is an assisted opening, huge, not huge, but large tactical folding knife. Lockup, flawless. Phosphor bronze bushings down there like I like to show you. There's your stop pin, medium sized. And then no movement side to side at all, adjustable, of course. Great lockup. It is a liner lock. There's your engagement surface there, you can see it. And while we're here, let's look at blade centering. Not too bad. As we see frequently in some Kershaw designs, it is listing to one side a little bit. Not really touching that liner on that side. Price point, that is about what we can expect. There are a few exceptions, but lockup, strength, uh, I think are excellent. Strength again, maybe not quite as strong as some other locking variations we've seen. In the tactical role, I think it'd be adequate. No, I would not go batoning with this. Handle material. Medium traction G10, I've talked about that lots. It's fastened with many Torx screws, Zytel backspacer. And I like the handle material. Sharp shoulders, a little bit. Um, provides, like I said, medium traction, not outstanding. There is a miss, there's always something, right? Not always, but usually. Uh, how do I, <laughs> I just sound so repetitious. There's no jimping. Okay, I know that. It sucks. That's why you see skateboard tape riding on mine on the very top spine, and it helps immensely. Now I have something to dig my hand into, and in that modification, I think it qualifies for the tactical use. Because, again, we got to have, you know, kind of a traction plan. Got a jimped liner there. That helps. The finger groove on the bottom. Ford grip works well. Slippery right there. I did have some uh, skateboard tape running right here. It peeled up because I'm not sure if I degreased it properly. So you could run two slips right, two little strips right there, and then it really locks in. The only disadvantage I found is actuating the tang because your finger without gloves comes down and runs right into that skateboard tape, which you can abrade your old skin right there on your finger. 
ergonomics I think are good. They're not excellent because it's not gemmed, like I said. Uh, in the reverse grip, which could definitely be a player for this knife, I say it's pretty darn good. Again, I'm not no knife fighter. Don't ever want to be, actually. Uh, and then could use it as a non-lethal. I haven't talked about this in a long time. Non-lethal impact device. Yeah. Nice big old handle. And by the way, that's another plus on the trimmer. The 1950, look how much real estate you have to grab onto. If your hands trend towards a larger size, like mine do, or especially if you're gloved, the trimmer gives you a lot to hang on to. Great job. Well, I wouldn't say great. Uh, adequate slash good job on the ergonomics. Again, we're missing traction right there. Clip design. It is a Type M from the catalog and I love it. This is one of their better clips. It's just straightforward, stamped with a Kershaw name and it's black coated, which I love. Adequately fastened with three torque screws. There's your, obviously your lanyard hole there. I keep forgetting to mention that on some of the other reviews. Uh, love the clip. Switchable to tip up, tip down, but only on that side, guys. Okay, uh, but I don't think that should be a huge problem for lefties. I mean, it is a flipper design, so thumb studs are not an issue. Handle occlusion, not an issue. Durability. Just like most of the other Kersh Kershaws I've talked about, I think it'll be excellent. Don't leave it out of the rain. Don't let it rust on you because 8CR13 MOV will rust on you. Talked about that. Although this one has the added advantage of the stonewashed finish that will make it a little bit more rust resistant versus bead blasting. Still love that steel. Fine edged premium Chinese stainless steel analogous to OS 8 if I did not say so already. Man, it's got an edge on it. Uh, durability, I think, again, if you don't abuse it, good to go. Value. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm just amazed at what they can do these knives for. How about around $25? What? I know. $25 for the 1950 trimmer? By the way, it comes in a serrated version. It has some partial serrations right here. I'll see if I can find a picture. Roll it in. I do not like those particular serrations on the 1950 ST. I think they're too harsh. I think they'll rip. I like the regular Kershaw scalloped shallow serrations. I know you guys may not agree, but I would not get the serrated version. I would get the plain edge version, easier to sharpen. Dudes, if you maintain the edge just as it comes out of box, there's very few cutting tasks this trimmer is not going to be able to accomplish. But value, $25? I mean, we were excited about the value level on, where'd it go? The Resilience by Spyderco, right? I paid like 40 for this. And by the way, I think I paid too much at the time. They were very hard to find. This is a great value. It really is. I'm not changing anything I said about this. But $25? Holy cow. The Cold Steel Recon 1 Series, amazing. I think they're great values. Around 60, maybe less if you look around. Great values. This is even even more. Just incredible. Slam dunk. I mean, it's not even a it's buy it now. It's for $25. That what you're getting. I mean, I'm just flabbergasted at the value. Awesome job, Kershaw. Yeah, it's made possible by overseas production, but I will tell you this, it has ex extremely high quality levels. By the way, it is jimped, a l uh, not jimped, but skeletonized a little bit. I think they could have done a better job with it. See those two holes milled right there? Opposite of the locking portion of the liner. They should have put two more holes along through there, and they should have milled maybe some bigger ones in there. It would have maybe shaved half an ounce off it. Still not a big deal. I've been carrying this for the last week solid, and it's been very comfortable in pocket. I know I harp a lot about the weight issue, this is a big blade though, and for a big blade, I'm willing to take some more weight on me. And again, for just normal civilian around town carry, not a big deal because I'm not carrying like body armor, ammunition, water, all the other crap I talk about. Cool factor is huge, dude. Huge cool factor on the 1950 trimmer. Smoking. $25 knife, roughly. Big old blade. Nice, beautiful sweep. That stone washed finish handle. Yeah, it kind of thematically falls along uh, with what Kershaw has done with a lot of other blades. We're talking a silver and black motif. Kershaw, if you watch this, come out with some really cool colors on this knife. 
maybe some, oh, here it comes, you heard it here first from TMP. How about some coyote tan handles on this? Some olive drab handles on the trimmer. Maybe some ACU handles on the trimmer. Just do it. <laughs> Black blade. I'll tell you this, I'll be addicted. I'll say, oh, I gotta collect that one. I gotta collect that one. We're talking 25 bucks. Gotta collect that one. You could have a whole ultra cool high value trimmer collection for under 100 bucks if they did that. What a cool idea. Uh, I hope they do it. That's the trimmer, 1950. It's a huge win. Another huge win from Kershaw. I hope I don't sound like a broken record. What's a broken record, nothing fancy? Uh, it's this one thing way back when they used to have, and they used to, oh, never mind. Yeah, but Kershaw is awesome. Awesome blade. This is the Nut and Fancy Review. Uh, slam dunk. Bye. See ya.